Hello everyone, you are watching BSG Online number 5. Coming up very soon, we've got Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, and after that is Trials of Mana, the remake, but right now, we have our very own Yorkie running at Renko Tsukigame's longest day, so take it away please, Yorkie. Hello once again, uh, I am back with another weird game. Unfortunately you won't be seeing all of the weirdness of this game, uh, just simply because we're running the any percent and not the old cutscenes version. Uh, Ranko Sugimi's Longest Day is a partner piece to a art project uh, called Short Piece. Uh, they, in Japan they made it as a series of short anime films uh, and they wanted something to represent modern day Japan. And what better way for that than to have a game? And they approached Goichi Suda, aka Suda51, and Yohei Kataoka of uh, Crispies to make this game. Now, you might not know Yohei Kataoka, but he's the man behind good old Tokyo Jungle. Uh, his team made that. And you'll notice that there's a nice little Pomeranian uh, dog on the front of the uh, game. Uh, that is an interesting thing that Yohei puts into a lot of his games, and we might be seeing something along those lines later on in this. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll get straight on. Uh, now we do already have a, pro a game in progress apparently, so we'll we'll quickly get rid of that. But uh, if you want to uh, get yourselves buckled in for a bit of a weird ride, uh, well, get yourselves ready uh, and stay hydrated. So in three two one let's go so first off we're going to be skipping all of the cutscenes you're not going to basically find out a lot about uh ranko in the grand scheme of things uh or her friends or what she does uh, i will try and explain the story as best i can uh the story it being suda 51 uh is uh also pretty weird uh, but basically, Renko is a 17-year-old schoolgirl uh, who is also a contract killer, uh, and she's out to avenge her mother's death by killing her father. Her father is uh, a... <laughs> well, you'll soon find out, uh, but we'll start off pretty quickly here. So, unfortunately, the game teaches us every time we start uh, how to play it. So we get taught about dashing, attacking, and jumping, and gliding uh, throughout the, the game, basically, every single time. It's one of the downsides of playing this, but it's a pretty simple game. Uh, you run right a lot, you occasionally run left, uh, but uh, you progress for each level, killing all of these little m monsters that really want to take you out. Uh, you get chains if the monsters are in proximity to each other. Uh, and, well, we'll be seeing quite a lot of very artsy style on the screen as we go. The hands that are chasing us are the Legion. Uh, and we're going to learn to shoot them by pressing L1. Uh, and you'll see that little ammo bar down the bottom, right? That charges up every time we kill some enemies, basically. Uh, but you'll notice that there are different paths uh, as we go through the game, uh, most of the time we want to be going up. Uh, if there's an option to go up, we want to be going up. Uh, that is, we'll avoid a lot of uh, terrible sort of pitfalls uh, and slow areas where we've got to climb out. Uh, but uh, yeah, the game flows pretty well when you play it well. I'm not saying that I do. Uh, we'll probably be getting caught out quite a lot in these uh, from here. But we also have nice little speed pads which help us obviously increase our speed. Uh, but hopefully in each level we will not be seeing uh, the the legion that are chasing us if we can avoid it. So if we're very, very fast, we shouldn't be seeing them at all. Uh, there may be one or two occasions where they seem to appear, but we'll, we'll try our best to uh, avoid them as much as we can. So yeah, we, we keep running right, we keep killing things, and eventually the stage will end and we'll move on. Uh, so, we're never really told what the enemies are that we're fighting in the game. Uh, all we know is that they're, they're out to get us. Uh, so, they get in our way a lot like that, but uh, we can chain them off and get them out of the way pretty quickly. So, we want that jump pad because we can glide a lot more than normal, and that is the first stage done. So, 
one of the problems of this game, if we do ever run the cutscenes, uh, is quite simply that the opening cutscene is six and a half minutes long uh, throughout the, the game. So it's a very slow game to get into when you're playing it normally, but the game kind of forces you to play as fast as you can. Uh, because you're being chased, you're always wanting to be as far, well, as, fa as fast as you can through the stages to avoid getting caught, really. Uh, kind of, I, I like to think of this game as the Weeb Sonic uh, game, uh, in the sense that you're, you know, always running right. You've always got to, to kill things and jump on things, but you get given, you know, uh, a nice way of doing it. So we learn how to slide here, and this is the first few stages teaches some different mechanics, uh, but we'll uh, slowly get through them. So we learn to jump uh, here uh, on wall spring. And now this is one of the quickest levels uh, if we do take the correct path. Uh, so we're going to be doing a big, well, not that, but uh, we're going to be doing a big jump in a few minutes, uh, which will get us onto the top path of the level, which saves a lot of time uh, from going all the way down. So we almost got caught out there, but that's fine. So, this is where the big jump comes in. And we get on that path and we keep going. And we're on the top path here. There is a, another bit where we need to go up, but hopefully we'll be able to get that as well. So, the game is very, very bright, uh, as you can sort of see. Uh, it is a very, very intensive game to try and remember the patterns everywhere, but generally it's pretty simple to keep once you get in there and get going. So here we go. So the boxes that we're sort of patching through here that you can sort of see me collecting every now and again are item boxes that are for special item unlocks. Uh, I've not actually, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I've not actually finished all of them. Uh, some of them are pretty well hidden uh, in the game. But we're going to go over here and try and unfortunately not get that little jump there. But that is the end of stage two. So we're slowly moving along. This is, uh, that was the office level, uh, as daft as it sounds. We're going to be moving on to the vault now. Uh, we're slowly making our way to where our father sort of lives and works, I guess. That's kind of our end goal. Uh, the vault is the next stage. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of the stages, that they look different, but again, they all play the same. Uh, there's not a great deal of difference between a lot of them. Uh, but the music itself is very, very nice. So we don't have any other cutscenes to skip. Uh, we're going to get taught how to reflect attacks here, uh, which is basically just by attacking. Uh, so we learn that we can reflect attacks and get attacked by doing that. And that is okay. So we're also going to come across our first sort of rooms of being locked in here as well where we need to kill a certain amount of the enemies uh, to get past uh, or unlock the door. So I always remember to do that because I'm very stupid and forget that you can slide. So we're going to slide here and over there. And we don't care too much about going up there because it's just as quick to come over here on this particular one. But generally, like I say, going up, if we can, is the best course of action on these routes. Uh, we avoid a lot more enemies this way. And if we can avoid enemies, that's always better. We don't want to be killing everything uh, in a game. So when you actually jump as well, you have invincibility on coming down. Uh, so it's can be quite nice to not get hit like that, but, uh, but just jump over enemies and take them out on the, the downswing of coming back down. 
So again, we can go up there. We're not going to. Because it doesn't save as much time this time round. But this one does. We get the present. And we're almost at the end here as well, so... So this is the first locked, fully locked room that we get. And it might be where we see our... Uh, Legion coming after us, but uh, using the gun, we can just shoot forward to get a bit of an uh, a head on there. And the, the Legion was just catching up to us there, uh, but we managed to just shake them off. So onwards we go to the subway now. Not long now until we get to the Grand Hotel and the first kind of boss, I guess. Uh, Unfortunately, you don't really learn a lot about any of the characters that you meet along the way, or why they are like they are. Uh, even with all of the cutscenes. Yep. So here we are, we're in the subway. This looks remarkably similar to where we just were, of course. Because, you know, well, a lot of money went into this game. They do, they do make fun of the game a lot in the cutscenes. Uh, at one point they do say that uh, they do talk about adding the uh, uh, non-animated cutscenes into the game as for budgetary reasons. Uh, now that big bomb that we killed there, you'll notice that we actually had to take a step back uh, when, once we killed him. If we'd have gone as fast as we were going, uh, we wouldn't have actually got past that point. Uh, it's a tiny bit slower to kill that bomb than it is to just run through that area because of that. Now these guys are being very aggressive this time around. And this is another room where we just have to kill enough enemies. And we're going to just run off because we're going to hope that the Legion don't catch us. You know, being a professional and all that, we, we can escape these guys pretty easily. You'll see this screen go really dark green when they catch up and you'll actually start seeing the hand come in. So we're going to learn use our slide that we learned way back in stage two. And we're going to hopefully get over here without going down. There we go. That is a very awkward bit of the game. Okay, so they they caught up to us there, that's fine. And they're back with us again, so we've got plenty of ammo. And that's the end of the subway. So we're well on our way here. This is, like I say, it's a very short game. With cutscenes, the the, uh, the game is normally about 30 minutes long. With cutscenes, uh, it comes out to about 45 minutes long. Uh, which is quite a bit of extra time when you think about it. Uh, although the cutscenes are amazing, they're individually sort of animated by different studios it seems because no cutscene is rendered in the same way some are in 3d some are in 2d some are hand-drawn animations uh there's a manga version set of manga panels that uh, showcase after defeating the first boss uh it a lot has gone into this game despite it being a very low budget game and admittedly it wasn't my first entry into speedrunning, uh but it is my favorite game uh that i play uh, even with it being so similar each playthrough. So we want to try and get up there if we can, and we have. Brilliant. So again, like I say, going up is best. Trying not to get hit by the birds is also... Because this way saves us a lot of time over the normal route. Although we did ma manage to not go all the way up, which is a bit of a shame. But we're back up here now, and we're back down. <laughs> Learning to jump correctly is, a, is an art form in this game. But we get a nice big super cannon to wipe off everything on screen, and we can go back up. And here we go. This is where we jump up from. So you see there, that is a lot quicker. We would have had to have climbed up all the way up that 
that sort of platform to get back up here. Oh. Slowly moving. And again, we want to go up if we can, so we're going to go up. We're going to get rid of those, and we're going to just glide over here. And glide over here, because it's quicker than running down the platforms. And we're almost at the end of stage number five. And again, another bomb room. So we'll use our gun there, because it's just that tiny bit quicker to kill him. And we're off. So we're coming up to the first boss, uh, or bosses, I guess. Uh, they are called Night and Day. Uh, and they have an interesting way of trying to kill you. Uh, we won't see them uh i'm afraid uh but uh we're gonna we're gonna progress a bit and i'll we'll, we'll hopefully get the quick kill on these guys because if we don't it becomes a bit of a pain uh, and as long as we can time our jumps right we should hopefully be okay and as long as they're actually going to go in the correct spots again they it should be all okay so this cutscene we uh skip here is her taking out her contract mark uh and the way she kills them, you'll see that she's running along the, with a uh, a violin. Cheshire has a violin that shoots bullets because Japan. Uh, of course, that's how you know they want it to work in here. So this is night and day. They have a shotgun and they both have a shotgun. Oh, sorry. One has a shotgun. One has an assault rifle. And we're going to try and do this nice and quickly as long as they go in. So I kind of want one to go over here. Yep, that's fine. So we got him, which is good. So we're on perfect so far. And we're in a silo, if you hadn't noticed, and we're being chased by a massive drill. So hopefully one of them actually spawns here. No, he hasn't. But hopefully one does there, that's fine, so we can get in there. So that is night gun. So Day should spawn over here on the right, which he does. And then he should spawn at the top, and we should be able to get him, and this should be the quick kill for the pair of them. And that is them two done. So that was the quick kill. They went in the perfect pattern of where they should be. And we should be under a minute for those, or just over a minute, so a bit slower than, than I wanted it to be. Only because we had to jump a little bit more one time. But that's fine. So that's our first boss. We're kind of done. So we're going to be introduced in the game sort of lore to Ren, uh, who is Moiko's brother. Uh, now, you've not met Moiko, so you're not going to know who that is anyway. Uh, but just know he's... Uh, a very interesting character that unfortunately doesn't live that long, but he has a motorbike. And we're going to be on it here. And this is the worst stage for the Legion there that are chasing us. Uh, we need to hit boost pads pretty regularly and kind of have a buffer of two shots uh, in our ammo crate uh, for taking care of the Legion, because you'll see that they're actually really, really fast now. They're almost as fast as we are. In fact, they're probably a tiny bit faster. But uh, as long as we keep our two-shot boot, uh, two-shot buffer, we should be fine. So we're going to just get rid of them there because they're going to be a pain. But again, going up is the best course of action for getting away from any of these because if we go down and keep going down, we will fall into the pit of despair and unfortunately die. So we're going to keep trying to stay up here uh, as best as we can and trying to keep that buffer, like I say. We've got one which is fine for us there. So again, they're catching up, so I'm going to get rid of them there. And unfortunately, we didn't get the jump there. That's fine. So we've got boost pads coming up, which is going to help us a tiny little bit 
There's another boost pad here. And we should be near the end of the stage soon. But we'll just keep our two shot buffer and keep them going. So yeah, Ren is a very interesting character. Like I said, unfortunately he doesn't survive the next boss. Uh, but we do, and that's all that matters. So again, we should be getting boost pads, and this is the end now. So they can't catch us even if they wanted to here. Uh, just simply because we're going past all the boost pads without stopping. Would now be a good time to read out a quick donation? Yeah, if you've got one. Yeah, we have $11 here from Spoderman. And they say, sorry, Yoki, but under Spider-Man, or we riot. Thanks <laughs> to all the runners and orcs putting on such a, little, a cool little event. And yeah, with that $11 donation, Undy Spider-Man is now in the lead for the bid war for the next uh, run coming up, which is... Uh, oh, that's not good. Spider-Man something. Well, we, we need someone to just... Spider-Man remastered. So, someone needs to donate for the Raimi suit. The Raimi suit is, is, is it all right, I'm afraid. Yeah, the Raimi suit is currently at $20, whereas Undy Spider-Man is at 21 So if you want to snipe that, you need to get your donations in within the next 10 minutes. So we're here finally at the second boss, who is a dragon, of course. Uh, again, you're not going to know this, but this is a friend of ours uh, who uh, turns into said dragon in a very uh, epic cutscene. Uh, you'll see that this dragon has a little flower in her hair. Uh, and that is a tribute to her as well as the little hearts that she fires out as well as the hearts going down her back uh, So this is uh, I unfortunately can't actually remember her name. Oh, it's Kirara. That's it. Sorry. Uh, this is Kirara and uh, Well, we killed her father uh, And she's not very happy with it uh, as you can imagine. So we just need to shoot uh, and, and take her out uh, so we've got three body parts that we need to take out the wings the legs and the tail and then we've got to take out the head as the final body part uh, Now I will warn everyone in chat there is gonna be a point once we've beaten her here uh, That she's gonna let out a very la uh, loud scream now Hopefully my settings are gonna be in such a way that it's not gonna deafen anyone uh, But uh, just just a quick warning uh, so we're here on Ren's bike uh, again because it can fly. I don't know why we just didn't fly You know The last stage and fly away, but uh, you know Who's who's here to argue that? So she's gonna swipe it across once again And we're just gonna stay up here in the top left out of the way because it's a nice little safe point uh, and fly around And we're gonna Go for the head so, as long as she doesn't do that, we're absolutely fine, and we should be able to take her out pretty quickly. Because uh, she doesn't have much in the way of a, a great attack sort of system. Uh, she can fire two beams out of her head, and they are pretty damaging. Uh, but, well, there you go. So, we're quicker than her to, to do damage. So, loud noise in 3, 2, 1. Sorry for everyone in chat that had uh, not turned down their audio just then. So that was still probably a bit loud. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the run I showed you Tokyo Jungle, we're going to get introduced to someone that is far, far worse at this point. Uh, also, Ren is a uh, Power Range-esque sort of uh, character and can transform. Uh, but uh, we're going to get introduced to Pom Pom, and you can imagine what Pom Pom is. Well, you'll soon see. Uh, but we're almost at our father here. Uh, PS3's load times are not very good, as you can imagine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're at Mount Fuji. And we're getting chased by something a bit different this stage. So as long as I don't get caught like I did there, because I was too busy reading the text. So this guy is higher on the food chain than the Legion that I've been chasing as recently. But here's Pom Pom. Pom Pom is Pomeranian. 
uh, a very big angry evil demon Pomeranian that wants to eat us. So we're going to try and avoid that as best we can uh, by totally not shooting him with our gun every now and again. Uh, because he will completely get in the way, although he's a nice little dog that will stand there and wait for us to climb up these little platforms. Uh, he will spare no chance or no opportunity to uh, eat us whenever he can. Uh, so we're going to try very and... Normal yeah, very angry little dog, except in this case he's about 20 feet tall and five times bigger than us. Uh, so... Yeah, it's, this is this. If, if, if you could get in a Pomeranian's mind, this is exactly what it would think it looked like when it was walking down the street. Uh, so we're going to keep running away here and hopefully get on the top platform. We're actually going to shoot him there because you know we, we have extra ammo. It's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, Pom Pom can somehow climb as well in midair. I'm not quite sure again how he does this. You know, magic demon dog. But we're going to go up here and he's going to wait for us again. He's a nice little dog in that regard. Uh, but he will float up and come chase us. So we're going to shoot him again there because he can catch us quite a lot. Uh, so we're going to go down as well. I know that I say we should normally go up. Uh, but occasionally it's not always possible. And again, plenty of ammo. So we'll just give him a quick, uh, a quick shot there. So this is Yohei Katooka's input on the game, I can only assume. He tends to put Pomeranians in pretty much every game he can... Well, every game he, he makes. Uh, I still don't know why, uh, but uh, I'm not complaining here because it really adds to this level quite a lot. But we should be getting close to the end, and there we go. So thankfully Pom Pom didn't catch us there. Uh, but the, the cutscene that we just skipped this is the gate to hell and we are the key uh we basically just unlocked it uh as daft and as weird as that sounds but uh we're gonna go on to the final the final stage uh here which is uh fighting our father uh so what we need to do on this stage is attack our father i think seven times or eight times and demask him now, I didn't tell you this, but our father is a luchador. Uh, because, yes. So we're in a uh, a wrestling match with loot platforms. Our sister's there in the middle because we have a sister from the future. And Pom Pom is just going to sit there and happily be our sort of, you know, not in our corner, but certainly not wanting to help. Uh, so we need him to do... A number of these attacks if we can uh, so we want him to do not that and catches from there but uh, yeah that's fine I guess uh, so each time he attacks he has a cooldown and we kind of want to get rid of the other guys here uh, and hopefully okay we're on the wrong side here this is fine but it means we can get rid of his doppelganger. We're going to get caught here. There's a chance this could end badly for us if he keeps doing attacks like that. This is fine. Because unfortunately we don't get as many masks as he does because that doesn't make, you know, isn't a nice thing. And now our sister's going to join in and not be on our side at all here. But she's going to come up to us and say, look what I can do. And she has the third eye and, you know, just she's going to be a pain. Uh, so we kind of want the masked man to keep doing those attacks. OK, so we don't. <laughs> so he's going to go into another drop down attack uh, with many clones at this point. Uh, it's not looking good for us in terms of health, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but he's over there to the left, so he will drop first. And the reason it's not looking good for us is because all of them can do this attack. Oh, 
Okay, we've, we've unfortunately died <laughs> because the game decided that they hit us before we hit them. So we'll quickly go back in. So we get a nice retry, which puts us back right here anyway. So unfortunately we got hit a couple of times where I wouldn't have liked. Uh, in fact, all the times we got hit, I wouldn't have liked. So we're going to try and get him to do the nice attacks again. Which is him not doing all of the jump up attacks. That's fine. So again, he's going to do his first drop down. Hopefully we get on the right side. We do get on the right side because we can get him right there. So now again, like I say, our sister is going to join in the battle here. And become a right royal pain for us. Uh, okay, we didn't get there in time. That's fine. So we want him to do those kinds of attacks all the time if we can, just simply because they're, they're the easiest for us to dodge uh, and also plan for. So again, he's going to split up here and we want to find the green one along the top. So we're right next to him, so this is fine. So if we can... Pink is there, so we need to go. We're going to get caught. There's Pink. Pink is over going the other way. So, Okay. So our sister will put the maskers as well, and ideally we want them to go for another another set of those. So unfortunately not. Our sister is really being painful here. Right, so we've only got our father left now, and we've got to avoid our sister. And there we go. That is actually I'm. So unfortunately, on my side, I went overestimate, but uh, couldn't, couldn't be helped. On this side, you went overestimate too. Oh, well, it makes up for the uh, the a lot of time save I made earlier on in BCV. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, GT anyway, that was a really good run. Uh, that is Renko Schemi's longest day. Now, I know I don't have much time. Uh, but we we do have like this cutscene where we unfortunately see our father like turn to dust, and you can sort of see the uh, the way the game's put together in this sense. Uh, this is one of the nicer cutscenes that they do. And uh, well, our sister wasn't really helpful in the game so i i like to think every time i go into that final boss battle this is this is what we we need to do so we say thanks and we totally pat her on the nope nope we we totally strangle her and we find out that she's a robot because of course cut the scenes are very pretty this particular cutscene is. Uh, some of them are very, very, very weird. Uh, or weirdly drawn. I don't know if anyone in chat has ever seen Pop Team Epic. But there is one particular cutscene in this game that is very reminiscent of the art team behind that series. Uh, unfortunately, we can't show it because it is uh, several minutes long. Uh, but it is the best cutscene in the game. And it is called the the epic or something like that in the uh, cutscene menu. Uh, but we'll we'll skip through that because it'll get to some uh, DMCA music, I'm afraid. Uh, but this is uh, another one of the cutscenes, and this is the Legion, by the way. Uh, and we meet our sister again, riding in on some kind of beast, some kind of demon. 
And yeah, this is the this is how the, some of the other cutscenes look. They're very very, like I say, it's a very art projecty game with the cutscenes all done by what I can only assume is different studios or different groups. Yeah, but yeah, yeah shout out I do. I always. want to just shout out to everyone of all the mod team, the fellow mods of uh, the ESA chat and the BSG chat. Uh, I want to say thanks to uh, Duo and Taint Italian in particular for pushing me to submit my games to speedrun marathons. Without either of those two, it, you know, it wouldn't have been possible to showcase these two very weird games today. And I also want to shout out to one particular mod in question, Troll there, uh, who is very cute. Uh, and I just want to say thanks to BSG for getting me, well, letting me in to showcase these two games. All right. Well, thanks for submitting them in the first place. Yeah, that was a really good run. I quite enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to transition into, into a quick ad very soon, and then we shall be coming up with Marvel, Marvel Spider-Man uh, just after.